One of these years, I'm gonna find a phone. I mean, a map. What is wrong with me? Why can't I end sentences the way I planned on? <laughs> That's interesting looking. Got a big old horse, weirdly detached head. Hmm. I take it to mean that the the horse was dismantled. I don't think that's the intended art appearance. Uh, could be though. Could have been planned that way, but it kind of looks like various chunks of this thing were carved off in various ways and came off maybe via a ransacking or two. And uh, now they kind of like have propped up the remains of it on stilts to be approximately where they might have been if the damage had not been done. Dare I talk to this guy? Bastards! We have a right to work! Oh, he's the leader of the scabs, yeah. We kind of got that by the time I talked to the guy upstairs. It's just, when I first walked in, I thought he was a protest leader. But it seems like these are the people trying to get in. So I guess the people that are down here are people trying to cross the line to work. So they're the scabs. Not great. The man yells towards the harbor gates. His voice is the loudest of the lot, and oddly screechy for a man of his size. What's going on here? Pull up and stay frosty, everyone! Cops are here! The broad-shouldered alpha male turns to you. He's a full head taller than everybody else here. You here to fuck with us? Be the oddest worker down? No. Good! We're fighting for a cause here! Right to work! Right to work! He chants at the gates. I mean, I'm not here to beat anyone down. That doesn't mean I'm taking your side. Besides, we're not that different. It helps the people see us talking. Cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Uh, well, I was just talking to the other guy a minute ago, so, uh... What kind of cause are we talking about? Rights of people, rights of workers, to have gainful employment, to make a salary, and feed their families. Rhetoric. His manner of speaking is wooden, the tone of voice bland and uninspired, almost as if compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Ah, so he's been trained to say these things. He might have even, yeah. He might not even be a real scab. He might have been hired already by the company to do this specifically to demonstrate to do a demonstration against the uh, strike specifically, and that's why he's just kind of plopping out these words here and there. Hmm. We have something new, don't I? Or is it? Oh. I think the lonesome way home is done. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> not in the middle of a conversation. I thought a new thought came up. Which I guess I should have not thought because there would have been a pop-up around here indicating that there's new thought in the actual feed. I don't think I've chosen any sides yet. Might be time. Don't let the fat bastards tread on you. Cops tend to side with the higher-ups, but you're essentially still workers. Wait, what? Are you suggesting that I should be siding with the higher-ups and uh, that I should be siding with the workers instead of the higher-ups? Wouldn't that be siding with the strike? The strike is... I guess they're saying the union is the higher-ups, but, like, the corporation would be the highest up, so, like, it's like... You better side with us little people instead of the big guys when, like, the union itself is supposed to be an organization against the big guys in the first place, so I don't know. We gotta get a feel for this one. I don't trust cops, but I can see you understand the right to work! Right to work! He raises his voice in chants. Regardless, I have some questions for you. Maybe you should ask them the questions. Like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! I already asked them questions, technically. We have families to feed, you piece of shit! All right. Oh, he's pointing at the guy on the railing. He points his finger at the man on the railing. I thought he was, I thought he, <laughs> like that's a hell of a reaction to me. 
trying to get me on your side. So do we, scub! Yeah, so he's mad at Manana. Yeah. He seems to be in intentionally misrepresenting the situation. I don't know. This could be some big, crazy situation where the union is like the super corporation in the situation somehow. Because they do have the weird suggestion that the, that the union is are the people who that have the the police themselves. Like they like would they have to, they seem to have an almost creepy level of control around here. So they might be something. They might have evolved into something more distressing. But uh, it is weird to have someone be shouting at the union about how we have a right to labor and all that. And it's, it's, I don't know. This whole, like, speaking truth to power sort of stance he's taken here looks really weird when it's to, when it's against the workers' union itself, which is the itself trying to protest against the company they work for. It's like, yeah, weird lunatic. We understand exactly what you're talking about. It makes him seem disingenuous, which is why I kind of had the thought, along with the fact that he's apparently saying practiced phrases uh, dispassionately, that it suggests that he might have he might be uh, he might have been coached by the uh, company itself to kind of demonstrate here. What is a strike? Sure, why not? What is a strike? When a bunch of ungrateful, lazy cockroaches can't get their act together, decide to block honest work for honest people. He shifts uncomfortably in his workers' overalls. So it, him saying that makes him shift uncomfortably, it seems. What do the strikers want? Beats me. They mumble nonsense about board rooms and workers' rights while we... He raises his fist and starts shouting again, Have the right to work! Okay, so he's really disingenuous. This is just all bad faith takes all around. He completely refuses to even acknowledge that the workers have, like, actual goals. And he's completely refused to engage with what the actual situation is. Or maybe either because he is, uh, dense, or because he's paid to be. Composure. There's something odd in the way he carries himself. His set of clothing looks vaguely mismatched. The different pieces of attire seem ill-fitting. Ill-fitting. Does that mean... His shirt is far too small, and an unpleasantly tight fit, while the overalls, held up by a belt, seem to fit a man with a mu with much more copulence. Hmm. So all of his clothes don't quite fit. Yeah, it, it does look like it's, re it's weirdly... Yeah, actually. He looks like he has giant pants and tiny shirt. And Composure is a trustable stat, right? Or at least it's a high stat. If they get high enough, they might become distressing. Composure, six. Composure wants you to not crack, or at least it wants you to not crack in front of other people. It enables you to put up a strong front. It keeps your emotions hidden from the world and helps you read the body language of others to sense the cracks in their composure as well. It keeps you looking quite good while you do it. You'll rock that disco outfit a lot more if you don't slouch. At high levels, composure makes you tuck your gut in and maintain a stern expression, even lying in bed. <laughs> Late night, when no one else can see you, you'll have to keep it up. You'll never be able to stop. With low composure, though, you'll always be able- you'll always be the first to crack. Every cop's got a point when all that fear and rage comes spilling out. And the ones who unleash it don't stay on the force much longer. Perhaps worse still, you won't even make the ranks of fashion police. Hmm. Hmm. So I guess it, it doesn't come up a ton here in this description, but I guess it also helps you read other people's composure, which is why we're picking up on his body language and his strange clothing. Because we're so about our own composure. Although if my composure is so high, it's hard to reconcile that with the game so far and my character so far. But, you know, maybe when he recovers from his over his uh, hangover, he'll be more composed. You wearing new clothes? He ignores your question, choosing instead to turn 
to the emaciated workers, raising both fists in the air. The clothes are obviously not his. Rhetoric. Silence is the answer. There's something off here, but he won't say what. I want to get into the harbor too. Have fun, he snorts. Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates. You trying to meet their fat boss? This is an official matter, not to be discussed with outsiders. Yeah. Right to work. He shake. He again shakes his large fist, then turns back to you. It's shameful, cops doing nothing. You should bring backup. Open the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. Is it? I'm actually not sure if anything involved in this process is really a crime, except for the murder. This is a labor dispute. It's kind of an internal matter. I don't know. We're not picking a side in this just yet, sir. Pity. He turns around and bellows at the gates. Let us work! So who are all these strike breakers? Honest men and women with rights to work. He's very focused on that phrase. To be useful, not toys for corporate interests. Uh, I'm very confused. He's using the exact opposite of language of how it's, you're supposed to talk about a union to begin with. They're the ones on strike. And he's using the rhetoric that people are supposed to have when they're on strike. That's strange. The man runs a hand through his steadily graying military haircut. We came here to help the labor run smoothly in a time of crisis. If union fucks don't want to work, they ought to let us let in those who want to work. I have a question. Lieutenant looks him in the eye. Why do all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow because I'm big and loud? Yes. <laughs> no, they follow the rules of the market. The rules of the economy. Because they were, he starts bellowing, given a job to do. Reaction speed. You've been talking to him for quite a while now. Something is off with this guy. Ask him where he's from. Okay, I gotta ask. What exactly- where exactly are you from? What's it to you? Deep set suspicion drips from every syllable. I thought you looked real familiar for a second there. No, don't think we've met before. His eyes narrow with mistrust. I came to help out the people. Drama. Every once in a while, it's like you can see glimpses of another guy under the guise of this fighter for jobs. He seems a more br brutal, cunning, suspicious person. Just a hunch, or you just might be paranoid. Already got that. I'm interested in your background. We're all workers, right? Workers stick together. Came from the eminent domain like Jamrock. Backgrounds in odd jobs. Heavy lifting. Cargo hauling. Bouncer work. I know the drill. Sweet, I know bars. Been thrown out of several. Maybe that's why you seem familiar. Worked at... Territorial. Ring a bell? Never heard of it. Are you lying? He squints at you. A little spark of violence scutters in his eyes. Then he blinks and turns to his men. We're done here. I have a strike to break. Ooh. Oh, this is unrelated, but it's happening. <laughs> The lonesome way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market, past the Boogie Street Spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district, then past the video rental store on the corner, 
There, at the end of the street, lined with pine trees, a small house, no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And what's the- and where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Learning cap of perception raised to five. Speed gives one sigh. Oh, so if I take speed, I get one sigh. Hmm. Drug use. Hmm. I can raise perception to five. Perception being... Here. Huh. Oh! Gotcha. I'm finally getting to another detail about this that I haven't... I, I just didn't lock onto that part of the interface yet. But there was a previous mention of that too. But no, the number of diamonds that shows up on each thing is different. So all of these have five diamonds. That's how many uh, skills I can add to each one as I level up. But all these Psyche and, and Physique ones only have one diamond, meaning I can only level them up once. Presumably in the entire playthrough, unless I get a raised cap, like what I just did for Perception. So Perception's cap just got raised to five, which is useless to me because, you know, this situation. Uh, this entire row has a cap of six. So I'm good on Motorix, so this memory doesn't actually help me. But there we go. Okay. There's a lot to take in. I probably went a little faster than I, than I could have when I was looking at the screen when we were making the character, but it's a lot. <laughs> uh, like, going through and reading this full description of all 24 skills would be uh, quite an intro before we have even a feel of how the game plays like, let alone, like, whatever happened there, actually. Anyway, we're getting it. We're figuring it out. We're good. It's fitting to be disorganized in your introduction of this game, because your character doesn't even know who he is, and it's a total fucking mess. <laughs> Little fits. Inexplicable feminist agenda. <laughs> oh, I'm so curious about all these descriptions. Mazovian socioeconomics. Homosexual underground. The litany of contact Mike. <laughs> what? There's just so much going on. The 15th Indo Tribe. Waterway South. The Jam Rock Shuffle. Na 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 na. <laughs> Alright, well, he didn't like me. Which, you know, fair enough. People don't like me. Yes. Fuck politics. Let's just all work together. Fuck politics. You know that the act of bypassing the strike is a polit- uh, <laughs> I just really hate it when people pretend that they're apolitical, but really what they're just arguing for is some form of status quo being preserved, which is itself is a political stance, you fool. <laughs> it's like, fuck politics, let's just bypass the entire strike and all of the goals therein, and just, therefore letting the people that are the opponents of the strike be the victor. You know, a political outcome. There is there, there are there are not uh, there are not non-political stances in many situations. They just they just don't exist. If you don't think like if you if you think you have a non-political stance in certain situations, I don't know, sometimes it's because it's something that literally is not a big deal. But in a lot of the situations that are a big deal, basically any opinion, including the supposedly sta like neutral or apolitical one, is itself a very real stance that is as uh, has an effect on the outcome of the thing, and therefore is very inherently political. And the people who think it's apolitical are themselves just kind of ignorant of the entire how everything works in the situation. You seem to be following me. No, I don't think that we have any more dialogue right now. 
Anyone talk to me when I come over here? Nope. That guy saying let us in? I thought he was looking back from this side like he's be- I don't know. G-R-I-H. He's- this guy's behind these little stands, so I thought the idea was that they're the opponents, but they're saying let us in. The Greater Revicol Industrial Harbor. Shit, or get off the crap, rassholes. No, this- Alright. Not a lot of these interactions make sense. Hey, money. People just dropping money on the floor. Are we even having like a labor problem? I got 1.5! What a boss. A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This big, grand, uh, big, heavy, grod made machine is well kept for such an old machine. Hmm. Given that I have interfacing, uh, that's pretty high. You might be able to do something weird, like use this lorry to ram your way through the gate with your motoric skills and uh, break the break the uh, protest. But that's not really the where I'm leaning anyway. Look in the window. <laughs> the windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a loryman's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. Perception. Smell. Fumes of heavy fuel oil waft over you, making your eyes sting. The odor mixes with cigarette residue. What kind of stickers and insignia? The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. Perception. A large metal pendant hangs from the rearview mirror. The pendant features a sun crowned with, very, with wavy rays. Encyclopedia. It is the seal of royalist era revical. Hmm. When that, I think that might be the equivalent. It's hard to say because we're still figuring the world out, but that might be the equivalent of having your confederate flag in your car. <clears throat> what about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep. Large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. Conceptualization. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large, muscular man. The title reads, Man from Hamdal in the Lost City of the Pygmies. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. He grits his teeth. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. The lieutenant nods towards the racist lorry driver. Ah, oh, so they think that the guy- he thinks that the guy from earlier, this is his place. Probably about right. You think this lorry belongs to our tough guy? Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. Composure. There he is, in front of Frit, smoking nervously, hoping it's over. Hmm. So he's just draped in the shit. Maybe it was his cup. Maybe he broke it. Because <laughs> he's been here for days. It's the recent trash. A foreign car kept in good condition. What can we find down here? It's kind of nice to be moving, actually. Just kind of exploring now that we've got the very dense intro over. I'm not complaining, though. That was a great intro. I am stealing from people, aren't I? Yep, I just doubled my money. That was a fantastic intro, all culminating in- What, my gun? <laughs> Pale driver. The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there's a warm smile on her face. The photo, an embryotype, from the turn of the century. As golden as her smile. Excuse me, ma'am, I'd like to ask you some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, the words fail to reach her. Snap your fingers? Wait. The lieutenant stops you before you can snap. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? Why? I just told you why. If you say so. Hmm. 
I wonder if he has insight that he's not sharing about like what she might be on or where she might be like mentally plus one to physical instrument work it <laughs> work it work it or is this is good for conceptualization yep <laughs> the low neck god damn the physical instrument Flex powerful muscles. Enjoy healthy organs. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> that phrasing. Yes, yes, please enjoy healthy organs. Would you like to... Would you like to enjoy your healthy organs? <clears throat> cool for muscle men, bare knuckle brawlers, gym teachers. <laughs> Physical instrument is not only your muscles and your skeleton. It's also your ability to use them effectively. <clears throat> it enables you to do push-ups, sit-ups... Knockout punches and 360 degree spin kicks. It's a, it's a one size fits all solution to thriving and surviving in a physical world. At high levels, physical instrument breaks doors, chains, bones, and it makes you laugh at the namby pansies who can't. You'll be manned up, encouraging others to curl iron until they're manned up too. At low levels, however, you'll be you'll have a hard time arresting anyone who isn't infirm or already dead. Indeed, uh, engaging in physical confrontations could leave you in either state. Yep. Captain Punchable Face. That's why I went reflexes. Sure hope it means- uh, sure hope those reflexes save my ass. Like those slow motion scenes from the Sherlock movies. Horseba horseback Monument. Oh yeah, worth the thing from earlier. Uh, there's a lot to take in here. <clears throat> I don't know. If it was done this way on purpose, it's pretty cool looking. But I kind of think it's not on purpose. It looks it definitely looks broken and confusing. It seems to have a series of wires that kind of mannequin it into place so that it doesn't come falling apart. Like it might have come apart. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks like it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air, with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. It's a really cool looking repair. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philippa III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revacol, son of Philippa II, the opulent, father of Philippa IV, the insane. Wow, really good titles for these Philippas. They, uh, the squanderer, the opulent, and the insane. Wow. Perception. As you look up, you notice something about the statue. There are some odd indentations on the king's chest piece. What do I see? Something with great kinetic energy seems to be have impacted the curious around where the heart is. A bullet? Visual calculus. Someone shot him in the heart. Interesting. Lieutenant, has someone shot the king? Point to the indentation. Okay. He cleans his glasses before looking up. I can't see it, but I'll take your word for it. What do you think? Well, Martinez is riddled with bullet holes. This place saw a lot of action during revo the revolution. But the statue is recently renovated, so maybe a joke? Target practice? Or a political statement? Political. It's a king, and he's shot. Why not? He shrugs. What this shows us is guns aren't too uncommon here, and people still shoot them. Something that sometimes at kings. He takes a note in his notebook. The king stands high above you, surveying the bay, mute and indifferent to your sightings. What did this king do? Encyclopedia. Even by the standards of the Philippian kings. Old sumptuous Philippa was known for his profli profligacy. Alright, well, let's just do this. Profligacy. 
profligacy, reckless extravagance or wastefulness in the use of resources. Licentious or dissolute behavior. <laughs> in what way? Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the Caesarian of Revicol. His own maladministration? Oh, his poor administration, yeah. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the Ante-Centennial Revolution. An end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. How did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth. Prugrans, bars of golds, uh, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. He called it the Sol Arum. It was obscene. There were whispers. He slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers like some obese dragon. Instead of a bed like a normal person. <laughs> hmm. Gold dipped feathers would be a terrible bed. Wait, really? There's no way that's true. But wait. You haven't heard. You haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. The what now? You see, old Philippa wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. So he was a he was addicted to nose candy, a bloated druggie. That's what the revolutionaries said. 150 years later, right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's mortal remains into the Insulindian Bay. Insulindian Bay. This is a lot to process. His majesty's courtiers said it helped him connect with the higher realms. I, mean, I, know, what, I know what cocaine is, but sure, let's exhaust the dialogue because it's my own brain. I'm not talking to a real person. Okay, what is nose candy? Cocaine. You already said that. Why was that a question? I guess it's just... Okay, that was weird. Alright, whatever. Okay. Where is he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of the, of the Insulindian Bay. Thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. What happened to the statue? The, the original was blown apart by communards. Then... Further damage during the landing of the Coalition's airships during the turn-of-the-century revolution, when Martinez was leveled. Most historians think the Coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the communards had more time, they would have reduced it to even finer pieces. Who restored the monument? Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically in inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Revacol in the in the poorest part of the city. They did it because it's ironic. Okay. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time. A rare butterfly trapped in amber, floating on the sea of shit. That's Brilliant? This is a little too enthusiastic for my taste, but I'm, but I'm not necessarily against it. So sure. That's brilliant. So funny and nihilistic. People in Martinez tend to disagree. As do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists. Conceptualization. Those critics might have it wrong, though. There's more to it than just... Ironism. Ironism. I'm not used to hearing these variations of irony. But you can't say what precisely. Perhaps this art mystery will be solved at a later time. Philippa III, the squanderer, however, 
with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the Hoi Populi think of him in death. The Hoi Poloi. Hoi Poloi, that just generally means like the general populace or something, right? Let's get a better definition though, why not? This is a fun googling playthrough. The masses, the common people, yeah. Somebody has said that in Discord and I googled it then too. <laughs> I'm not above googling terms. There's a lot of language out there and some of these aren't even in my language. Rhetoric. Not that he ever did in life, either. Interesting. I could see why it might be tasteless, given the historical context, to have it here. But just as a general concept, like in a vacuum, the idea of reconstructing the shattered statue in the moment of its destruction is just a really fun idea. And since I saw the visual impact of the idea before I had the context for why people might be mad at it, that's the kind of the the thing that lingers over time. Because it's just cool. Whereas I'm still trying to get immersed in the world and the details as to why someone might think these ways. So I guess it's cool to me in the context as being a guy who's playing a video game. But it might not be cool to me as the context of person, someone, as somebody living on the street that li that's on. A bold slogan, Hubinox covers the truck. But I'm, I'm a sucker for just creative art ideas. Ruins full of snow. No one lives here anymore. We seem to have reached the local extreme. A little cul-de-sac. Let's let them path around. I don't think I can go up anywhere else around here. So there's currently a strike going- Oop, there's a door. Ah! Almost- almost missed this place. Brit, sick. Like there's something missing from it? Brit. What do you- Doesn't sick usually mean that you're removing something from the overall context? Am I- am I wrong about that too? I'll- I can Google that too, I'm not afraid. Sick, used in brackets after copied and quoted word that appears odd or erroneous to show the word is quoted exactly as it stands in the original. As in, a story must hold a child's interest to enrich his sick life. A Latin adverb sick inserted after a quoted word or passage indicates that the quoted matter has been transcribed or translated exactly as found. In the source text, complete with any erroneous, archaic, or otherwise non-standard uh, spelling. Cool. So I basically just didn't know what that meant. Good to know. I, I think I'd only ever picked it up contextually without ever having to search it. I kind of took it as being like there's like something removed or something not included. But I guess that's already the ellipses, so that yeah, that would be kind of pointless. So it's kind of a weird kind of warning built into the translation or transcription to indicate that the transcription itself might have something wrong with it, but we're just going to go ahead and, you know, let it go. Britte. There are three T's. Is that what the description said too? Or does it have one T? Maybe that was, maybe that was why it said sick. Is because the spelling's wrong. Three T's. How idiomatic. Yeah. I think that's- okay, that's why there was a sick there. I'm learning things. <laughs> Sometimes video games are a tutorial for real life. <laughs> oh no. Yellow roses. Dozens, dozens of them. Tulips, too. A melancholy pop song plays on the radio. That's always interesting, though, when you have just the moment where you realize, hey, I've, uh, completely gone based entirely on context alone until now about what a thing means. Let's find out if I've been wrong this whole time. Like, somebody was expressing to me frustration or irritation or about something, and they described themselves as chuffed. And I'm like, oh no, chuffed, is, chuffed means you're, like, jazzed about something, you're psyched, like, it's, you're quite pleased, actually, is when the, when the British people say they're chuffed. Which I only picked up through context, too, so hopefully I'm not wrong. Let's Google chuffed. <laughs> I just used to play rock band with three British people. So, yeah, very pleased. So I just picked up chuffed when people kept saying it all the time. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? But I never asked them. And then I, I just picked up by context what they meant. I click on this? No? Okay. The 
the knickknack stand. You see several uh, packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice boxes. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big frite slogan on the back. Interfacing. The packages are small, discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take, unnoticed. No need to worry about knocking over the display. Hmm. So, do you want a raincoat with plus one endurance, and also you're going to be bright yellow now? Which, by the way, can I just point out how fucking cool it is that this is a game where when you change out your equipment, your character's appearance changes. Like, that's not unheard of, obviously. In fact, literally the last RPG I played had that, although it only had it for armor and weapon and a hat, I think. Like, this game has rather detailed accessory switches, and it's just like, eh, a lot of games like this that would have these kinds of items would just not let that happen. But, like, I, I can see my dumb gloves, and I can see my my, my little clipboard, and I, when I changed my shirt earlier, you could see the tank top. Tank top. I just I just always I appreciate that whenever that comes up. We, gr we get to fully live whatever bizarre appearance we've given ourselves. Savio Fair 3. Is it 3? I was gonna say, it's one of my good stats, but I've, I've fucked it up, right? Yeah, my it's supposed to be a 5, but my items have given it minus 2. But I'd have to change those items out if I want to steal. But I'm not really in the a hurry to steal. Also, like, I have a partner watching me, and I'm a cop. So there's a number of reasons why it's like, maybe we're not gonna play that character. Although I will just pick up money on the floor, I guess. But if I save up $4, or... Or... Rev whatever they were called. I forgot already that I can buy a raincoat for plus one endurance, which would fit into the... I can't look at that in, from here. Uh, I think they locked your inventory away because they don't want you to change your gear during a conversation or an interaction because then you could change your stats and kind of cheat. What's that? Point to the raincoat. What is... what? The girl leans over the counter to see what you're referring to. Um... It's a raincoat? If you want to buy one, then it's only four real. She taps on the glass counter. The raincoats patiently await purchase. How nice of them. So I assume they'll take my jacket, which right now my jacket just gives me a bonus to cop stat, where I get where I'm better at being a cop boy who's good with cops. Which admittedly, not really a thing that I'm I'm good at. It's gonna give me a what? Plus one to endurance? That's actually not a bad thing to get a bonus from overall. Although having a cop stat doesn't hurt either. What is my cop's... A spirit did... Corp yeah, I'm at two. Because the base is one. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. He returns to her magazine. Conceptualization. What's that magazine she's reading? What's the magazine you're reading? You mean this? She looks at the cover, boasting a colorful photo of two girls kissing. This is Pop Stars. It's got like famous people in it. It's not for sale. It's got like famous people in it. <laughs> Composure. Looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. Stupid famous people. I approve of this very futuristic tap on the girls kissing. Futuristic? Distressing? Alright. Forget about all that. What's this fashion police feature? <laughs> Points at the cover. Um, it's where they rate different outfits famous people wear. It's kind of funny. They're kind of mean. It's about who's the most stylish. Kind of funny. They're kind of mean. <laughs> I gotta kick out this conversation. Who's the numero uno guy in there right now? Does he look like this? Um... It, her lazy eyes scan up and down your body, assessing the situation. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> we are not the fashion police. We're the real police. Thanks, Kim. 
Before you, we go on, what is this frit? I don't know. Frit? She shrugs. And what is frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store. Why is it written with three T's? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. It doesn't. She chews on her gum with disgust. Encyclopedia. The store the story goes that the normal frit with two T's, a men's workwear shop in in Vredefort, was already taken. So when Frit Retail Incorporated grew into a multinational corporation, they had to add an extra letter to avoid trademark infringement. Better than Ezra. I have some questions for you. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but He puts the magazine down. I mean nothing's no one's here. We're fine. You're not there aren't people to be busy with. Does Frit have a warehouse in the back of the whirly gig and rags? Or whirling in rags? A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe I don't really care what Frit does. Come on, give me something to work with. She looks up from her from under her brow. Fine. Frit doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here, okay? She turns back to her magazine without waiting for you to respond. Can you tell me anything about the dead body? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, it's- I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... What do you think happened? Um, I don't know? No need to worry. The lieutenant's voice is soothing and professional. It's just standard pre procedure to uh, for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. She scratches her nose. Did you know the man who died? Not really. Not really. Does it mean you knew him a little? Uh, no, I don't. I, I didn't know him at all. How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long? Thank you. Thank you for your help. Uh huh. She brushes a strand of hair off her face and uh, tries to return to her magazine. <laughs> sure, let's just go all in on on weeding her out at this point. Can you tell me anything about the reality we're in? Reality? You mean what reality? Economic reality or? Conceptualization. She is like a student, unexpectedly called upon by a teacher. Can she answer the classroom question? Yeah, tell me about the economic reality. I don't really know anything. I mean, I'm 15. 15 is an excellent time to learn about the economic reality. Yeah. She looks at the clock on the wall. That's why I'm working my ass off in Frit, I guess, uh, so I guess, like... That's economic. What about the physical reality then? I don't know. What about it? What is the revolution? When ordinary people take over the government and, uh... Demand democracy? What about the one we had here in Revicol? Yeah, it happened like 50 years ago or so. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. At history, I mean. Where are we? We're in Frit? No, I mean, like, where are we on a larger scale? As mankind, or as a nation, or... Conceptualization. What will her essay prompt be? Like, as a nation. Um, we're in a... We're in a... She rubs her face, thinking. We're in a transition! You know, transitioning from, a uh, monarchy to democracy, all that stuff. She nods, then folds her magazine back. What time is it? I don't know, look at the clock. It's right behind you on the wall. The clock shows that it's 10.09. The hand seems to be still. It's apparent the clock doesn't work. Ah. Uh. The coalition, what's that? Someone told me there is one. A government? Or do you mean something else? Sorry, I really need to finish this article. 
She taps the magazine on the counter. No, you don't. <laughs> it's definitely not true. You're just you're just waiting for someone to do shopping here. I won't bother you with this nonsense anymore. Cool. She seems happy to return to her reading. Well, that was a fun little distraction. God, this art style is so good. Look at the screen. Just look at this entire screen right now. Ah. This whole interior just looks so great. And the characters all fit really well with it, even though, like, it's like... It seems to be a 2D drawing. Like, the whole game seems to be a 2D drawing and the characters are 3D. And they do a pretty decent job of, like, blending in with it. It reminds me of when an anime has 3D animation, but the 3D animation does a shockingly good job of blending with like the two-dimensional backgrounds and environment and so on, which is rare. A lot of a lot of the ones I've seen, which I, also, I actually haven't watched any, I've only seen videos of them. Uh, a lot of them, it can kind of be jarring and stand out, or the 3D can look kind of weird, but the other ones were like... There's other ones where if you were to pause it at any moment, all the, th all the 3D elements would look like they were part of the 2D environment. And you wouldn't think that they were 3D. That's actually one of the only things that Tokyo Mirage Sessions did well. All those anime music videos that happened. Not anime music videos. The, uh, the J-pop, uh, performances that happened in it were all, like, 3D animation just like the rest of the game. But they were done in a cel-shaded style that looked so surprisingly 2D in its kind of effect. And it was just, like, a really cool outcome. Dare I talk to this guy again? Looking for something? Nah. There's no new dialogue about the truck. And generally pushing that again may not end well for our friends. I'm not sure that our I'm not sure that Kim's gonna appreciate going further in those directions. Alright, so we covered most of that direction. You can see, like, my line of sight has, like, a very hard boundary. Mail the collection box. This post le adventure uh, mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. Is that common? Confused about graffito. A graffito, in an archaeological context, is a deliberate mark made by scratching or engraving on the large surface of the wall. The marks may form an image of writing. Definition of graffito, an inscription or drawing made on some public surface, such as a rock or wall. Also, a message or slogan written as if as a graffito. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> graffito is the singular form of the Italian graffiti, meaning little scratch. Interesting. So graffito is the si graffiti is graffiti is a plural word, and graffito is the singular. I don't know. In the U.S., at least, graffiti is seen as a uh, it's an art form, which itself, which is admittedly tends to be. Uh, sprayed upon public locations, but it's usually a spray paint art form. I don't know how much I really need to explain graffiti to anybody, but I've never heard graffito ever before. But it seems to more specifically, on top of being the, apparently the singular in the syntax of a particular language of graffiti, uh, it also seems to more specifically refer to, like, scratching onto something. Like, I guess it's what you would call, like, etchings on a tree. Like when people etch, like, hey, these people were here, or this person heart this person, like on a tree. Scratched into that, that would be graffito, perhaps? I don't know. I'm grasping a little bit. I was just, it just kept coming up and I was just curious about this word that was like so similar to the word that I, I was familiar with and used in similar contexts, but I couldn't tell why it was slightly different. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. Perception. A faint sticker on the side reads RCM Emergencies Desk Number 8102, with a slogan, Mankind Be Vigilant. Ugh. You have the chance to express an opinion about the delivery box. You can say it's good and pat it, or you can be fuck you and kick it. Ah, oh, good mail delivery box. The box seems happy. 
Perception. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the cun. <laughs> the coon, no. And Saint G. Eat shit, pig! Fucked by the coon! And Saint G! With the crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny's a whore! And Bassy says mailbox! Also. Mail collection box, you should man the fuck up. <laughs> been there, mailbox, been there. Hey, it healed morale with my bonding with the mailbox. The mail collection box seems cathartic, thankful even. So do you. You shudder, then you swallow. Huh. This game's bizarre. <laughs> How much area is down here? I'm kind of get a, trying to get a feel of my boundaries. It looks like there might be a lot of area down here. Okay, so let's let's ignore that for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna hug the wall up here as I try to parse this environment. I wonder if you can wrap around to the backyard because there was stuff visible past the fence when I was talking to the little girl. Looks like there's a shop over here. This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half-naked dame on its cover. On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. The book is titled, Man from Hemdal in the Wildfire. Hey, it's that one again. Man from Hemdal. This book is about Pate. This book, you don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. A book about the... Boa, boyadero culture. It promotes freedom and- oh, there it goes. Shit. A book about the future. The government reads your mind using radio technology. You memorize the title. Luz, 87, Radio City. Seems important. Hmm. You memorize the title. A little curious about that. Hmm. Yeah, I still don't have a new one, do I? I'd probably unremember Lonesome Way Home the moment something else pops up. So I've technically got a slot open for now. Whereas this one gives me the ability to increase my endurance cap, which technically does something in the long term. I guess it's kind of their way of making sure that you have the ability to have up to four endurance points in this game, even if you didn't specialize in endurance, but you're going to have to buy them. Whereas otherwise, you actually have a cap. You can't just make up the difference by choosing to specialize in certain stats that you didn't specialize in from the get-go. Unless you get the ability to raise the cap through other means. It's an interesting little system. Crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. To a bookstore. It's a long way to just say bookstore. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. Hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? She stomps her feet to feel warmer. What kind of store is this anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. You don't mention postcards or games in that title. Encyclopedia. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. <laughs> oh, no. My encyclopedia is getting excited. What's a book? <laughs> What's a postcard? What's a board game? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I know all these things. You're fooling nobody. <laughs> Don't you sass me. I said I know all these things, and I do, goddammit. Sir, are you okay? You've been standing here silently for a while now. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. <laughs> I hope they're about books. What's your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mom, her name is Placence. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register. And, or organizing the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts. Her eyes wide, as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signaling that the store is open, 
she nods eagerly. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd mess out on crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. <laughs> Pat her on the head. It's so condescending. I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. <laughs> I should have a word with the store owner, maybe. Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mom by luring in customers. He stands upright and smiles like a little soldier. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. Shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mom keep this place running. Isn't going to school more important than this? Mom says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mom says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get a whole ahead in life, you succeed. Composure. There was stress and unease behind those words. She's reciting etiquette. Oh, You're gonna have rough teenage years. Just being overworked when you try to figure out who you are as a person and all that. How's the business going? Mom says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being... She looks over her shoulder. Cursed. Cursed in what way? Cursed in a way that makes them say no to business. Uh, in a way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they've all got, that they'd all go... She's looking for the right word. Bankrupt. Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. I don't think curses are real. They shouldn't be, but they seem real. Anyhow, they say that these grounds are doomed for business. They're not doomed, but your mother should learn from their mistakes. Of course, sir. Um... She doesn't really know what else to say. Yeah, because this is a strange conversation to be having a little bit. What is crime? What is romance? Who are these famous people? Who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old or artists and writers or musicians. Those kinds of people. They're usually... There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold, redded cheek. Then continues... I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Logic. Seems like most people who read these books fail to get more famous from reading them. Reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. She smiles gleefully. That's uh, unassailable logic right there. Hmm. These famous people sound like a bunch of dorks. And that expression remains ever so helpful, but she doesn't say anything. Never mind, I literally had nothing else to say. Okay. She looks at you with her wide eyes. What's this crime business? Crime fiction's about murders and burglaries or things like that. The work of a policeman or private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Not crime fiction. I need to know what crime is. Jesus Christ. Okay, I get it. Crime murder gets the people going. Mm-hmm, she tots. And it's kind of like a puzzle, too. You can guess who the criminal is, or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. You don't look like much of a policeman. She examines you, as if to find something policeman-like. I got a clipboard. <laughs> I've also got a policeman standing next to me, so that's helpful. <laughs> huh. Well, what does a cop look like? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover on which there's you see a strapping vespertine officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman.
I used to look exactly like the Mullen guy. Then I decided to live a little. What's that mean? Uh, you know, cut loose, raise hell, blow off steam. And everything's better now, sir? No. <laughs> Why is that? You'll understand when you're older. Oh, okay. She blinks at you, not knowing how to reply. I shouldn't have said anything about Dick Mullen. It's not your body that's important in police work anyway. It's your... Points to your head. Head, yes! Reaction speed. No, your mind. Drama. Not head, child. Heads. What? Drama, I'm confused by you, but okay. Flexibility. There are millions of different people out there, and you have to be- you have to get into their heads. Sometimes you gotta be the killer to catch the killer. Isn't that very dangerous? She examines the picture of Dick Mullen. Well, I did die twice in the first two hours of playing this game, so yes. <laughs> Except, oh, that wasn't really the police work. Policemen live and breathe, danger little girl. Mullen obviously lacks the chameleon on, chameleonic skill. Unlike you, sir. She smiles mischievously. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Maybe you can show some... Me, show me some real police work, sir. The cover image of Dick Mullen seems to stare at you with harsh disapproval. Like in the books. Composure. I'm going to do something now. Challenging, but I have a huge chance of success. Okay. Alright, sure. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna... Let's do something. Don't let me down, skills. The girl keeps her hands folded. Hidden. Why is that? No. Please don't deduce that she's being abused by her mom. I don't need this. Hey, why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? She looks wary. That's totally where it's going. I knew it was gonna be bad, like immediately bad. That said, if her parents are beating her, like... It doesn't get solved from the inside. More like I'm just not... <laughs> just wasn't ready for this right now. <laughs> uh... You don't need to be worried, I'm here to help. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with a little interest. Or with little interest. Really. It's okay. She brings out her reddened hands. Her nails are frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. You bite your nails. Hey, did you do this from keeping my me keeping my hands folded? He shoots you a suspicious glare. Okay, it's not- it might not be as bad as I was worried it might be. There were a few other hints. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. Her eyes flash with defiance. She's not impressed. Oh, don't press our luck. You want more? Bet I can figure out why you bite your nails. Got a few reasons in mind. She nods, half provocative, half, half enthusiastic. Okay. She's half enthusiastic. Okay, so she's not... That means the truth doesn't worry her, at least. Probably. She's all excited. So, okay. Uh, I thought this was going to get so much worse than, than it is. Let's see. Rats have been nibbling on your fingers. No. Recycling your body material. No riches without person. No. Yeah, the first option is the only one. You're uptight because of your mother. 
and the pressure she's putting on you. Dismay flickers in her eyes. Maybe so, sir, she sighs. Okay, I know. It's a bad habit. I shouldn't. I hope this entertained you. It was okay, sir. She still got that rebellious streak. Alright, that was more fun than I thought. There's more than can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. You think so? Fine. Do better. To do something about me. Oh god, it's gonna be so easy. I'm a mess. You're quite sober. She snaps back quickly. The lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I'm more impressed by the writing or the fact that, like, I think this game's translated, right? Because this game's Estonian. And I, ch and I looked into, the, like, yeah, like, it, I think this game might have been written in Estonian first and then translated to English or something, which makes the localization impressive on top of the writing. This, this might, this even beats out the Yakuza games, which is some really good localization. I'm also sad and my head hurts. I'm sorry, sir. She looks you in the eye, sympathy gleaming in her face. I hope it gets better soon. There she stands, swaying on her feet. Assaulted by the early spring breeze, she smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar, somehow. Logic, there's something you're missing. Why does this feel familiar? Wow. My suggestion skill is garbage. But this is not going to work out. You have absolutely no idea. Familiar how? You must have forgotten something you heard again. Ah. Uh, it's a white check, though. So you can technically come back every now and then to give it a little bit of a go, but it's going to have a low chance of finally setting off. Like, maybe the whole playthrough's worth of low chance. What's romance? It's the type of book where there's a rich lady, and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. That's an interesting summary of the concept of romance <laughs> as a whole. <laughs> she smiles at the thought, perhaps imagining herself in that situation. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about a man and a lady business, sir. What about when everyone's poor? That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. Sometimes you have to write about real life things. Not in romance books, sir. <laughs> These are about nice and pretty people, and everyone is happy in the end. What about a poor man getting a rich lady? It happens, but usually the, the guy gets rich in the process, or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly. Thus, uh, like during the revolution or something. Yep. It's the kind of fantastical writing where you tend to conflate richness and class with quality of character, so therefore you end up kind of rewarding the characters with richness by the very act of them showing that they're good people and so on, which is f potentially fine and fun in a fantastical sense of your fun little story, but it kind of leads to an unhealthy t tendency in real life for people to conflate class with quality, like the quality of the person with the class that they're in, and people do this subconsciously in many ways, or sometimes more consciously, because we often assign worth and worthiness to how much money somebody has. And there might be a role that uh, these kinds of stories play in those kinds of presuppositions, because you grow up on stories where that's just told to you. The pretty people and the rich people are always the good people, and they're, they're always beset upon by the poors and the uglies and the witches who were always ugly because they're bad because the good witch is pretty i see those are unhappy books for most of the pages people sad about what they have lost 
But then it all turns out fine just in the end. What about when both men are bad? Those are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. What if it's written really well? Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady decides, then decides not to pick either, because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that'd be interesting. What about, what about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask mom? Oh, that's frozen. <laughs> Yeah, do you think she has one about an excruciatingly painful breakup? I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. She pauses, trying to figure out the appropriate answer. No, th no, think about it. One where they plunge into a torrid spiral of pain and recrimination, only it's really long and drawn out. Scarred for life. Phantom limb. Um, no, I don't, I don't know. She looks at you with puzzlement. Doesn't ring a bell? All right, I'll ask her mom. <laughs> yes, she nods, relieved. She notes books, definitely. Conceptualization. What was that? An idea for an unfinished novel stuck somewhere in your forebrain? That's enough romance for me. I have other questions. Maybe some about other books. She rubs her chilled nose with her fist. Okay, bye. See you around, Danette. Ah, uh, she was a she is a real sport. That was that was just a fun little <laughs> exchange. Where I was worried I was going to just fuck the whole thing up the whole time. This, I, this game just is just fun to have conversations in this game.